Welcome to the Video Dictionary, where we explore the history, meaning, and context of the words we use every day. Today we have a request from a patron. Liam Thomas requested a word that is sorely missing from the world today, and that word is absolution. Noun. The act of freeing someone from obligation or punishment regardless of actual guilt. History and Etymology The Catholic Church has played a huge role in the history of Europe and the English language, and it was in the context of the Church, and particularly the Sacrament of Penance, colloquially known as Confession, that absolution became part of the English language. One of the basic principles in Christianity is that when you convert or are baptized, all of your sins are forgiven, and you are released from the eternal punishment associated with sin. One of the struggles of the early church was, what about the sins that occurred after baptism? The sacrament of penance was the Catholic Church's answer to this. The sacrament consists of four parts. Contrition, confession, satisfaction, and absolution. The prayer of absolution performed by the priest at the end of the confession absolves the penitent, the person seeking forgiveness, of their sin. This forgiveness was the primary definition of absolution when it came into general use in the 1400s. Let's take a look at the Catholic process of absolution for a moment. For the penitent to receive absolution, they must start with contrition. Contrition is when the penitent genuinely feels remorse and sorry for their sin against God and their neighbor, this is formally represented when the penitent would approach the priest and say, Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Next comes the confession, where the penitent tells the priest what sins they have committed, and they have a discussion with the priest about those sins. The next part is called satisfaction, or sometimes penance. This is where the priest gives the penitent a list of tasks, usually a number of prayers, alms, or sometimes even a pilgrimage. These tasks are meant to purify the penitent in a temporal sense. In the final part of the sacrament, the priest says the prayer of absolution. God, the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God give you pardon and peace, and I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This confused me when I read about it initially. If the priest absolves them, why do they have to follow through on what equates to a punishment? I grew up as a Protestant, and until recently I didn't really understand how salvation worked in the Catholic Church. And as I was researching this word, I went down a rabbit hole exploring Catholic belief on the subject. From the perspective of a Catholic, the priest's absolution only absolves you of the eternal punishment for your sin. It absolves you of having to burn in hell for all eternity, but it doesn't absolve you of any temporal punishment, or more accurately, called correction or purgation. That's where the satisfaction or penance comes in. You may no longer be damned to hell, but you're still drawn towards sin, and these penances are meant as an exercise to help you avoid that draw. Technically, the penances aren't required, but if you don't do them, that tendency towards sin will still need to be purged after death in purgatory. Doing the penance shortens your stay in purgatory before entering heaven. Purgatory goes up. From a Catholic perspective, if you end up in purgatory, you are going to heaven. It's just a matter of time, based on how much purgation or penance you still have left to do. And that's what absolution originally meant. It was a freeing from eternal damnation of hell. And just like most words brought into the English language from the Catholic Church, the word absolution comes from Latin. It began as a compound word from ab, meaning off or away from, plus silvere, meaning to loosen, dissolve, untie, release, or dismiss, forming absolvere, which meant set free, loosen, or acquit. I think it's interesting that absolution contains the root word solution, 
or solve. It's like the word solve by itself means to untie a knot or to solve a problem. An absolution is like stepping away from the knot or the problem without having to solve it. When you're absolved of something, you don't have to deal with it anymore. You don't have to solve the problem. And finally, absolution was then reinforced and reborrowed from the old French word absolution in the 1200s, bringing us to the word we have today, absolution. Prescription and commentary. This is the part of the video where I give my perspective on the word and how it should be used or applied to ourselves today. I tend to get a bit political after this point, so if you feel the need to back out, that's fine. Just make sure you subscribe for more history and etymology, and I assure you that leaving a like on this video only applies to the content that comes before this point. Unless you want it to apply to the rest, that's up to you. Exploring this word was great fun for me. It gave me an excuse to explore Christian theology, which is another subject that I have a great love for. One of the ideas I came across when I was watching videos and lectures and reading about absolution and penance was its relation to the Enlightenment and possibly the creation of capitalism. When Martin Luther challenged the Catholic Church on their requirement for penance and taught that all work was pleasing to God and not just penance, it drastically changed people's perspective on work. Up until that point, if you wanted guaranteed immediate entry to heaven, you would have had to join a monastery or the priesthood so you could constantly be doing penance that pleased God. But if you were absolved of both temporal and eternal punishments, like Luther taught, you were free to pursue your own good and the goods of those around you. Many monks left the monastery during Luther's Reformation to pursue business and work. This concept of complete absolution is something that I think is missing from our current societal discourse these days. Too many times have I heard a politician apologize for his skin color or sex like it was an original sin of some nature. We've nearly undone everything that the Reformation achieved. But this time it's not the Catholic Church demanding penance for the sins we may or may not have committed, but it's a new church of social justice demanding reparations for the sins of our fathers bestowed upon generation after generation, with no hope of absolution, no redeemer. Oh, and remember, if you're not contrite enough, none of the penance you've done counts for anything, and you're still guilty. Once our culture can finally come around and absolve ourselves of these sins, we can finally move forward and get about the business of improving our lives and the lives of those around us without the imposition or hindrance of this new priesthood and their demands for penance. They demand contrition, they demand confession, they demand penance but they offer no absolution. Let's follow Martin Luther's example and take absolution for ourselves. I absolve you of your sins and the sins of your fathers and their fathers before them. Well, now that we've been absolved of any made-up guilt we were suffering from, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this exploration of the word absolve, please leave a like and make sure you subscribe for more explorations of words and their histories, etymologies, and meetings. Follow the link in the description to my website and the blog post for this word for links to sources and related videos. If you want to help support the Video Dictionary Project, follow the link in the description for more info on how you can help. And until next time, keep on learning.